Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flare Mouse. Today we're going to have an early look at the Kronos 1.4C high-speed camera. For folks interested in high-speed slow-motion videography, this camera is truly a game-changer. This is a $2,500 camera that has features, speeds, and resolution equaling cameras that are $30,000. Now the camera I'm showing you is a pretty much a beta prototype with still beta software in it. The finish is actually very nice on it. It's a billet aluminum in a black anodized finish. The camera isn't much larger than a just your standard DSLR camera, measuring only six inches across and about four inches tall. Now here's my Sony RX10 II. Um, doesn't have any removable lens, and look at the size of that massive touchscreen on the Kronos camera. The camera is completely self-contained. You don't need an external power supply for it, although you can run it off of external power supply. But it uses these big Nikon, even generic batteries that you can get on eBay or wherever. And the camera does have an internal charging circuit. uses just a 19-volt laptop charger. And yes, you can run the camera just off that charger if you want. You don't even need to have a battery in it. The camera just uses an SD card to store your files on once you save them. And the file type is MPEG-4 at 60 frames a second. Now the camera can use a simple remote trigger that plugs into the side of the camera just like that. And that way you can operate the camera remotely. You could shoot a gun and have the trigger right on your lap and press the trigger. Now the camera is essentially a Linux-based computer. And the boot up time is approximately 30 seconds. And I'll show you this in real time just so you know just how long it actually boots up and eventually it'll probably have a fancy splash screen there that probably looks something like that. <laughs> That's the guy that made the camera by the way. And bear in mind this is the beta software and the camera's firmware can be updated through the menu system. Okay the boot up is complete once you see that screen and it's ready to go. Now, I found all the menus and the different screens very intuitive and easy to find things on. And there's basically three screens you'll use. The main screen, the record setting screen, and the play screen. Okay, let's have a look at the record setting screen. This is where you change your resolutions and all that stuff. When the camera is booted up, it defaults at 1280 by 1024 at 1057 frames per second. That is twice the frame rate that the $30,000 Fastec TS3 operates at. Now you can adjust both the vertical and the horizontal resolutions by increments of two. As you make the resolution smaller and smaller, your frame rate goes up higher and higher. And you'll notice there's a diagram there which actually shows you what the resolution is going to look like when you start recording. And you can also use this menu with that has a bunch of preset resolutions in it. And if you're curious, the maximum frame rate on this camera is 21,650 frames per second. Now once you set the focus and all that stuff, you arm the camera by hitting record. Now if you didn't save the file that you previously shot, you'll get this reminder screen. When the red lights come on, the camera is pre-recording in a four second loop. I'll just pass my hand in front of the camera, hit the record stop or the trigger button. We can now re immediately review the, what we've filmed going to the play screen. Now we can save this entire clip to the SD card or we can selectively locate the event that we want to save, mark it out, and then save that to the SD card. We'll end up with a file that's much more easy to manage in the editor because you don't have 20 minutes of footage that you don't really need. Plus it saves a bunch of time saving it to the SD card. Now we can either use the scroll knob here and if you push it it actually speeds it up a little bit. Or we can use the arrow keys there to find that event, find the end of the event at this point, and we could save that wonderful blurry image of my hand going in front of the camera. Now we're just gonna save frames 5188 to 6832 to the SD card. We hit save and the transfer begins. Now the more frames you have, the longer this process takes. So you definitely want to get in the habit of marking in and marking out just the footage that you really want to keep. 
Now for the stuff that I do, I found that the four second buffer or pre-record time is more than enough time to work with. So I really can't imagine needing that eight second buffer. Some people may need that, but that's an eternity in slow motion. Now one of the things you need to do with a professional high speed camera like this, and this, this is gonna be a Phantom or any other brand, is do something called a black calibration. And I'll show you how that's done. Now anytime you change any uh, settings, you know, resolution or anything like that, you really need to do a black calibration. What that does is it just tells the camera, hey, this is what black looks like. And this should be done after any setting change or after the camera's been warmed up for a while. Now you can either close the iris all the way or put the lens cap on it, hit the black cow, and in just a few seconds it's, it's done. And if you don't do this, grays will look like blacks and blacks like grays. So it's just a good habit to do this every so often. This camera just uses C-mount lenses and just operates just like any DSLR type lens, f-stop, zoom, and focus. So if you need a macro lens or a telephoto lens, no problem. There's really nothing proprietary to this camera as far as the battery, the charger, the lenses. It's just a fantastic and easy to use camera. I've only had this camera about a week and I'm getting pretty good with it. I think I'll get even better as time goes on and I can really push the limits and try that that really high frame rate. Now this is the camera I've been waiting for for a long time. It's great for field use. You don't have to plug in a laptop. You don't have to plug in an external power supply, have cables all over the place. You can hold the thing in the, your hand and film with it. Now, this truly is an affordable high-speed camera that gives stunning results. And it's a perfect camera for a university or industry or your YouTube channel. It's something that you can afford to buy instead of renting. I will be putting more information about this camera in the description and when it'll be available for the public. Thanks for watching.